Okay, I think now it's time to start this uh, seminar. So uh, welcome everyone uh, to this new uh, DSEO uh, seminar on GDSA standards for earth observation. Uh, today, our speaker is uh, Monique Caglis from the International Telecommunication uh, Union Focus Group on uh, Artifi uh, Intelligent Artificial for Natural Disaster Management. And she will be giving an overview of, of the activities of this group. Uh, this is an active group with you know several documents and recommendations. So this will be very interesting for, for our technical committee and for the society in general terms. So thank you for being here, Monique. So go ahead, please. Okay, thank you so much, Hugo. Um, I think it's probably good morning for most of you here in Europe. It's already uh, early evening. Um, my name is Moni Koglich, and I'm the Innovation Manager at Fraunhofer Heinrich Hertz Institute in Germany. And um, as Hugo said, I also chair um, a uh, focus group, which actually is transitioning into an initiative. So we'll say for, for now, I'm, I'm the chair of the ITU-WMO UNEP Global Initiative on Resilience to Natural Hazards through AI Solutions. Um, I know this is a very long name. <laughs> so from now on, I'm just going to call it the Global Initiative or Resolutions. Um, the Global Initiative is very new. We did a soft launch at a meeting um, last month, and um, it's really the successor to this focus group on AI for natural disaster management which Hugo mentioned. Uh, so for the webinar today, um, I'd like to give some background on what the focus group was, what it accomplished, and also where we're heading as a community um, in this global initiative. So um, the focus group and also uh, the uh, successor, the global initiative are nested in the standardization branch of the International Telecommunication Union. And the ITU is the UN agency that's responsible for information and communication technologies. And it's also the only UN agency that has the mandate to produce standards. So um, the way IEEE produces standards or ISO pr produces standards, the ITU um, is, has the similar mandate. And these guidelines that are produced um, on how to use technology become mandatory once they're adopted into the national laws. So we work very closely with the member states, the UN, to make sure that they're comfortable with everything that we produce because we would like them to eventually use it to inform their policy. So when we launched the focus group, which was three years ago, almost to the day, we first did some reconnaissance. We looked into existing international standards. So those that had been produced by ISO, by IEC, by IEEE, um, ETSI, ASTAP, and also from the ITU. We also looked at ad hoc standards that had been produced within the UN system. And through this, we were able to see some gaps um, when it comes to the intersection between AI and disaster management. So as you can see in this, in these bar charts, um, there were not so many guidelines on how to use digital twins, big data, or AI. And there was also a bias towards the later phases of the disaster management cycle. And this is interesting because when we looked at the scientific literature, we did a lit review from 20, uh, 2007 to 2023, um, we see that the interest in AI for managing different kinds of hazards has grown immensely over the last years. Um, so what we wanted to know is how do we get these to line up? So how do we get the standards to match what's actually happening in research? So the ITU has mechanisms to facilitate collaboration among experts and stakeholders in the development of standards. So over its three-year term, the focus group benefited from an official partnership with two other UN partners, the World Meteorological Organization, which of course um, is specialized in hydrometeorological hazards, and also UN Environment, which has an active uh, disaster risk reduction program. So this picture, for instance, captures uh, the focus group uh, at a meeting that was hosted by the WMO um, early on in our, in our activities. In really concrete terms, um, the focus group's aims were to systematically evaluate the use of AI in this domain, to identify challenges as well as opportunities, and to develop best practices. We also wanted to share these insights through capacity sharing activities. It's really important to us that everything that we produced technically is accessible to all the member states at the UN. So I just want to emphasize that all of the documents that we produced are open. 
Um, you can access them from our website. And at the end of this presentation, I'll show you a QR code that will bring you to the focus group webpage. You just need to create a free IT user account if you don't have one, and then you can access those deliverables. So um, to put a little face on the focus group, uh, um, overseeing the operations, we have a management team, um, which is composed of experts from pretty diverse backgrounds and sectors. Supporting me as chair um, is Dr. Elena Schoplaki, who's a climate and extremes expert at the University of Gießen in Germany. Professor Jörg Luderbacher is the chief scientist and also the director of science and innovation at the World Meteorological Organization. Uh, Dr. Morley Thumarukudi was actually the head of DRR at UNEP and then moved to UNCCD. This is the UN branch on drought and desertification. Um, Mr. Srinivas Chiganti is from the Department of Telecommunications in India. Dr. Rekia Babamaji is from the National Space Research and Development Agency and also has affiliations at the African Union and UNDRR graph. Uh, this is the disaster risk reduction branch of the UN. And Ms. Yanchuan Wang is from China Telecom. And I just wanna mention that this same management team has swept over into the global initiative. So we've all stayed the same. Um, as you can see in this organogram, uh, the management team uh, is supported by a secretariat at the International Telecommunication Union. And in, uh, together, we oversee a constellation of working groups and work streams. Those are, I guess, on the third row. And then below that, you'll see uh, tiles representing our topic groups. And the topic groups are basically how we organize another very important source of information that we use when we lay the groundwork for standards. So. Over the last three years, we've uh, curated a library of 27 use cases that cover a range of hazards and applications of AI. This uh, was collected through a very systematic process. So we had open calls for use case proposals. We received over 100 uh, use case proposals. Um, if we deemed them to be uh, uh, relevant, <laughs> to actually deal with natural hazards and AI, to be scientifically sound and to be mature enough to provide us with results, then we adopted them and nested them by a hazard into these topic groups. And I did see at least one topic group chair is on the call or on this webinar today. So I'm very excited to see that. Um, and in the last few weeks, we've actually been able to bring 10 more use cases on board. So we're in the process of up onboarding them, but that will bring us to 37 use cases. So analyzing these use cases, as well as the scientific literature uh, from that lit review and the other standardized standardization activities, um, we have working groups and work streams with clearly defined responsibilities. So I'm gonna show you some of those in a bit more detail. Our working groups on data modeling and communications follow what we see as being the main steps of the uh, AI life cycle for this uh, domain. So the working group on data looks at topics related to data custodianship and curation, data preparation, annotation, and ethical considerations. The next working group basically picks up where that working group left off. Um, the working group on AI for modeling looks at how these data can be used to actually train a model. It looks at everything from learning methods and algorithms to performance evaluation. And the third working group on communications looks at how these models can actually be deployed operationally. So whether that's in a decision support system, a dashboard, a chat bot, a hazard map, an early warning system or forecasting system. So these I would say are where like the core of our analysis happens, but certainly they work together. They also work closely with the topic groups to get domain expertise. So if you look a little bit more closely at the working group on data, you'll see that the co-chairs um, are uh, Ms. Allison Craddock and Mr. Arif Albayrak were both at NASA, but on opposite sides of the, the continent. Um, their report actually uh, is, is finished. It's um, in press. Um, and it looks at things like data themes, uh, metadata, um, annotation, bias, data visualization, et cetera. So um, I think that this report in particular should be of interest to the audience today. So I encourage you to uh, have a look at that. Um, in the working group on modeling, which for which we have three co-chairs, uh, Dr. Jackie Ma, who's from Frauenhofer Henrik Hertz Institute, he's the head of the Applied Machine Learning Group. 
Uh, Dr. Andrea Toretti is um, from the European Commission's Joint Research Center. He's responsible uh, for the Drought Observatory. And Dr. Uh, Jesper Dramsch from uh, ECMWF. This is the European um, Center for um, uh, uh, Weather Forecasting. Um, they've looked at topics from uh, guiding principles and AI training to AI algorithm selection into transparency and explainability. Um, and again, this report is also in press and can be accessed on our website. And then, as I mentioned, our working group on communications, um, this is chaired by Dr. El uh, Ivanka Pelevan from Frauenhofer Hunter Kertz Institute and Mr. Chet uh, Karwatowski. Uh, this was actually one of the first reports that we finished. It looks at how these AI-based algorithms can be used operationally. Um, one of the first slides that I showed today was the results or some of the results from our standards roadmap. Um, it was produced by uh, a working group that's under uh, Mr. David Oman from UNFCCC. This is the UN branch that's responsible for climate change. Um, for this project, uh, it was really important that we saw where standards work is needed, also where standards work is being done in groups such as uh, this group at IEEE to ensure that we really take advantage of the synergies and work together and do not duplicate work. So um, this was a really important uh, activity that we did. Another important output that we produced is a glossary of 524 terms. We discovered very early on in our focus group that um, our topic is very interdisciplinary. So we work with geoscientists, we work with uh, humanitarian organizations, we work with uh, first responders, we work with the machine learning experts and computer scientists. And sometimes we use very different words to mean the same thing, uh, or sorry, to use different things. Um, so it was important to have a sort of uh, resource that we could turn to if we wanted to make sure that we were speaking in the same language. So um, this was produced by uh, Dr. Ellen Shoplaki's work stream on, on glossary. Uh, the inspiration of two of our focus group experts, Mr. Rudy Vengaswamy and Mr. Anarud Kool, led to the creation of a work stream that's been testing the use of large language models to assist with data exploration. This was a really cool project that really came out of their uh, inspiration. Um, and we've been uh, happy to see demos of this at our past meeting. And I believe that they'll be joining us um, this October in India to give another demo at another ITU meeting. So be sure to check that out. And all of these activities that I mentioned on the previous slides have provided ample material for our working group on educational materials for capacity sharing, which is being co-chaired by Dr. John Cox and Mr. Lorenzo Nava. Um, we've used a variety of approaches, hackathons, webinars, workshops, sometimes bringing up to 800 participants at a time, and also hands-on training um, in order to enhance the accessibility of our work for many stakeholders. So as I said earlier, we don't want our technical reports to just collect dust. We want them to be a resource, a value for the member states. Um, so we wanted to make sure that we also gave opportunities for people to try them out. Another collaborative effort that we've had is the drafting of scientific publications on topics of interest. So um, while we've produced these uh, very comprehensive technical reports, we've also come across topics that we as a community thought deserved additional uh, attention. So we've done deep dives on AI specific challenges when using earth observations for disastrous reduction in the AI context um, that was published in environmental research letters. Uh, we also uh, wrote a paper for Nature Communications, looking at the interaction between end users and researchers when developing AI-based tools for disaster management, um, particularly when using AI um, for the purpose of something that will be deployed operationally. Um, we believe that it's really important that whoever is going to eventually use that tool be part of the entire project so that they give their input to make sure that whatever is produced actually is useful for them. And then in a paper that was in the WMO Bulletin, we also looked at some use cases um, that were anyways um, being explored in the focus group to understand different opportunities, challenges, and also prospects when using AI for disasters reduction. So here's just a couple publications that um, you might want to look at if you're interested in this topic. The 
breadth of our activities and also the growing interest in both disasters and AI has resulted in some interest from the press. Um, so here are just a couple pictures of, of where we've appeared in the international news. Um, but as I mentioned in the sort of teaser opening, um, having finished our three-year term, uh, last month, the focus group actually wrapped up its last deliverables, which means that they're on the way to the member states at the ITU in our study group two. And we're in the process of transitioning into a new UN mechanism, which is an I2 global initiative. And so um, here is a picture of us doing a soft launch with representatives of the three UN partners. So we have um, Ms. Sally Radwan from UNEP uh, next to me and uh, Professor Jörg Luderbacher from WMO and uh, Mr. Sezo Onoe from ITU. As you can see from this graphic, um, the purpose of the initiative is to continue to build on our past standardization and capacity sharing work. So we're going to be adding new use cases. Um, I also sort of gave a teaser that we did just adopt 10 new use cases. So that process is already well underway. And certainly if anyone on this uh, webinar has a use case where they're using AI for disaster management, please let me know if you'd be willing to share that with us for further analyses. Um, we're always happy to integrate new use cases into our work. Um, in addition, we'd also like to broaden a little bit our scope of technologies. So certainly there are some technologies like IoT and Digital Twin that um, are used in combination with AI. So in those cases, you know, we'd like to also look at those technologies in more detail. Um, we also want to update our technical reports as we get new insights and also as the technology evolves. And we'd like to keep doing deep dives on topics of interest. So we're working on a couple of papers right now, looking at topics like explainability and how important that is when you're using AI for um, this topic. Another thing that we're actually going to start, which we hadn't been able to do as a focus group, but now which we'll have the freedom to do is to actually move into implementation work. So once best practices are developed and these technical reports enter the standards pipeline, it's really important to us that these documents are actually used so they're actually implemented. And um, a great way to do that is to actually have projects where we integrate these best practices. So um, we actually got funding for our first implementation project from the European Commission's Horizon Projects. Um, the project is called MEDUSA. It stands for Mediterranean and Pan-European Forecast and Early Warning System Against Natural Hazards. And it's basically, a, the concept is basically to build a multi-hazard early warning system, which covers the greater region around the Mediterranean. And we deliberately tried to include one of the early warning for all priority countries, Ethiopia, in this um, concept. So I'm not sure how familiar um, the listeners are, but um, during uh, one of the COP meetings, the UN Secretary General made an announcement that by 2027, everyone on earth should be protected by an early warning system. Because when that was announced, less than 50% of the global population actually had access to an early warning system. So um, this is a very huge project. It's very ambitious. And there are a lot of people at the UN that are working tirelessly on realizing this goal. And so this was our way to try and contribute by including one of those first 30 priority countries um, within our project. And this project is looking at how AI and other cross-cutting technologies can be used for four aspects of this multi-hazard early warning system, for decision support, for multi-hazard forecasting and impact assessment, for uh, risk transfer solutions, and also for societal support and outreach. And what I hope you can see, maybe it's it's on your computer, it's it, hopefully it's clear, is that we have different um, symbols which show what the hazards that we're looking at for the different countries. And we've basically identified twins. So these are basically regions where the same hazard is faced by these um, countries, but possibly there's a different uh, approach to dealing with the hazards, or there's a different infrastructure in place. So um, this will enable us to see how well AI performs under very different circumstances, and also how scalable it will be in different regions. 
So this is one of the outcomes that we're hoping to, to provide through this project. And I just want to mention that WMO is coordinating the project on our behalf. Um, and we're trying to produce other similar projects, drawing on the expertise within the focus group slash global initiative community, because we really do have experts on many different types of hazards, different AI approaches, um, and also different aspects of early warning systems and, and other disaster management strategies. So there is a really nice potential to create consortia from our community and try to address um, this really important um, topic. So I just wanted to close this presentation by inviting you to visit the focus group website. We are in the process of transitioning into a global initiative. So um, soon, hopefully we will move to a new website, but for now um, you can access basically the information that I just presented um, by following that QR code. And as I said, if you create an ITU user account, then you'll also be able to access our collaboration site, which is where all of our reports are stored. Um, and I do hope that you'll also consider joining our mailing list because that's where we announce any upcoming events um, and, and the possibility to participate. So I wanna thank you for your attention and um, Hugo, I'll, I'll pass the floor over to you. Hi, thank you for this nice talk. So now it's time for moving forward. And, um, questions, comments? So please go ahead. Uh, Monique would be happy to, to talk to you. Maybe comments in the chat. Please go ahead. Or maybe Monique, you want to, to span more, you know, some specific topics while uh, we are waiting for questions. Yeah, sure. So I do see that there's a there's a request from Adnan for the um, focus group website. So that I can certainly put into the chat right away. Um, that was an easy question. I like those questions. <laughs> so I'll just put this. I'm hoping that. Um, how do I just type the answer in here? I guess it's the easiest way. So we'll just put it in there. So, um, so I think. One of the things that actually really excited me about this webinar in particular, um, as I mentioned during the presentation, is um, one of the very first activities that we did with the help of UNFCCC was to see what other standardization work is happening. And certainly IEEE has a history of working in this space of earth observation and developing data standards. So, um, you know, this is a place where we would be very happy to have, you know, your engagement in the focus group, whether that is, you know, within our working group on data, which our colleagues at NASA are co-chairing or in another capacity. So um, I just want to extend that invitation again. Yeah, no, it, it, it was great having you here. And yes, IEEE has uh, a great experience of standards. In terms of ERSS, we started with these uh, activities like a few years ago. And we, we did a lot of work, have some standards published. And I feel we feel that uh, it would be great having some synergies with different communities and you know, uh, putting the standards together and you know, and uh, moving forward with uh, applying several standards at the same time with projects. So this is wishful thinking for the future. So it's nice having these, you know, these different perspectives and and, and it's nice to, to having you here. Yeah. Absolutely. And I think something that we noticed, and I'm actually curious, like what your experiences have been. So when we did this piece for um, environmental research letters, we really looked at, I mean, I think the challenges of earth observational data are well known, but with AI, there really are some nuances that you uh -huh. don't have when you're using earth observations in another context. So it was really interesting to, to look at those, you know, from annotation, et cetera. But it was also interesting to look at some of the opportunities that AI presents. So um, one of our use cases, which is from um, NASA JPL, is looking at how um, federated learning can be used when countries are not comfortable exporting data for, you know, political reasons or, or for security reasons. So, um, we also have other use cases that are using transfer learning because there's a lack of observational data for the hazard that you know they're 
they're trying to address in a certain region. So um, it, it's funny, you sort of have like the two sides of the coin. You have like the extra challenges that you have to deal with when using it for AI, but you also have some opportunities that AI presents to um, use data in an innovative way. Yeah, I totally, totally agree with, with your point. Yeah. Uh, no, and this, this is something that, uh, as you know, the society uh, creates new needs. Uh, you know, uh, the engineers and the scientists uh, community create new, new tools, and it's like a loop. And, and we are here to, to help run, uh, run that, that loop faster and, and better. So that's why I think that the standards are so important in our community. Also connecting, you know, the, um, our, our communities, our scientific communities with the industry and yes. with the government. So that's that's so important. And it's important to, to you know, uh, develop flexible and, and clear standards, but also it's, it's important to connect with the uh, key persons in, you know, in the decision makers and the industry, because at the end, what we want is, you know, to uh, to implement our our work in the in the real life. So that's that's yes. important, and that, I think that that's why these uh, you know webinars are so important you know, to uh, you know to to disseminate our our work. So thanks for being here. And well, thank you for having that me. We have a new question. I um, know oh, that's that's no. I actually I think there is thing, one. Thanks for the link, right? No, okay. Uh, so um, oh no, I think there is a new question from I also from Adnan. Uh, Should I read it? Yeah, yeah go ahead. There is no doubt we need standardization, both for the data as well as algorithms. But I sometimes feel like we are too far from it yet. Could you perhaps put a timeline, like five years or ten years? Very good question. <laughs> so this was something that, of course, we thought about as the end of our focus group was approaching. You know. Can we really stop? We can't stop. The work's not done. I mean, just within the last year, I mean, the AI Act, you know, was ratified at the EU level. Um, you know, we saw Chat GPT take off. So things happen so fast here. There's really no chance to put, I would say there's no chance to put a timeline on it, but I would also say probably our work will never be done <laughs> because things are just so dynamic. So what you know we're working on producing reports that capture the zeitgeist right now, based on the use cases that we have right now. Um, but for this reason, we need more use cases. We need to stay up to date and we need to be able to capture those changes in what's happening in the field. Um, and certainly we do, you know, as, as you were saying, Hugo, we need to work with the private sector. We need to work with all these different partners because, you know, we really need to get that holistic picture of how AI is being used. And ultimately, we also need these standards to be implemented and, and adopted. So we need to also listen um, and hear, you know, what where where work is needed. Okay, nice. So uh, we have time for there. There are more questions, or maybe we can just uh, close this very nice talk and invite you next year to give us uh, an update. Yes, glad to. Okay, thank you. Thank you so much. It was a, a very nice talk. Uh, congratulations because of your great work. I was reading the documents in your in the website okay. and I feel that they are great. So thank thanks you. for the work and, and thanks for, for being here. Well, thank you for having me. And let's let's really find concrete ways to work together moving forward because I think there's a really good potential here. So yeah, yeah. I agree. Mean. Okay. Great. And thank you so much for, for everyone listening and for the great sure. questions. So, all right. Okay. So, have a good day.